H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another video of H2K Infosys. In this particular video, we will see the uh, working behavior of Java language uh, with a text file. That means we are able to actually use the Java language for the process of creating a text file that is a dot text extension and reading from the text file and writing into the text file. Now let us see the understanding of how to create a text file or read and write it to a particular text file. For those uh, behaviors and to do these kind of affairs, we need to use some kind of inbuilt classes present in the Java language. So first of all, for creating a text file, we need to use the file class. And when we define the file class, we actually define the object of the file class rather. So we have to create an instance of the file class and define the path and the name of the text file that you want to create. The path has to be defined so that in which particular path we want to create the text file, it has to be defined. And the method used to create the text file will be the create new file method. This is a method of the file class which is used to create a text file in the concerned path defined by the object of the file class. Then for writing on a text file, we will be using a particular class called the fire file writer class. We'll create an object of the file writer class. Okay. And this file writer class object has to be pinpointed to the reference variable of the file object. The file writer class is basically used to write on a text file. After that, we will be using the buffer writer class. And this buffer writer class is basically used to create a buffer memory for writing. And this buffer writer class will be created so that the object of the buffer writer class can pinpoint toward the file writer class object. Then we will use the write method of the buffer writer class to write on the text file. So write method will be used to write on a specific line. Okay. And then let's say we want to use a fresh line to write a, another line rather. We will use the new line method of the buffer writer class. And then we have to use the flush method uh, so that we can flush out the buffered memory. If you do not use the flush method, what is going to happen is that even if we write something on the text file, it will not be doing that particular process of writing until, unless we use the flush method. So these are the class files we need to use for writing in the text files. Next part is the reading on the text file. How do you read from the text file? For reading, we have to use the concept of your file reader. So this particular class will be used to read from the text file. And this will pinpoint to the reference variable of the file object created. After that, there has to be a buffered memory created for reading from the text file. The class used to read from the uh, text file is your buffered reader class. And this will pinpoint to the reference variable of the file reader object. And then we can use the uh, read line method of buffer reader class to read from the text file. So these are the different classes used for creating reading and writing and now we will see an example of it. So let us see an example. I already have the uh, Eclipse open in front of me. So I will create a new session called as or rather new project called as session 39. And uh, we'll click on finish and say no to the perspective. So in this project called session 39, 
inside the source file i will right click and create a package so let us right click and create the package go to new call the package i will call this package as create read write text file package and with the same name i am going to create the class file also so i'll copy this say finish so inside this package i'm going to create the class file with the same name control v call the main method out here okay so first of all let's create a class file uh, create a text file rather so create a text file so how do we create a text file we need to create an object of the file class so file f is equal to new file after that we need to control shift o to actually import the file class it belongs to the io package you can see that and we have to pass on the argument the argument will be nothing but the path and the name of the text file has to be defined in the argument so let us understand that let us go to a uh, to desktop for example and inside the desktop we will create we will get the path of the text file so if we can right click on any of the existing files okay and go to properties i will get the path of the desktop and this is the path of the desktop so right click click on copy say okay let's go back to our you know script and inside this within the string format we have to give the path and after giving the path this is the path where the text file will be created and let's say the text file is let's say example dot txt do not forget to give the extension of the text file and after that if we are using our backward slash we have to use the escape, escape sequence so use the escape sequence and your red underline will go okay after that after the file a path of the text file is given then we need to use the create new file method present in the file class to create the file in the existing path so we'll use the reference variable f of the file object f dot create create new file now if you see the return type of create new file is boolean so if the file is created the return will be true that is boolean true if the file is not created in the existing path defined in the argument of the file object it will return a boolean false and if you see out here it will throw an exception and the exception will be the io exception that if the path is not found the file will not get created and the exception will be thrown out and this exception will be you know handled by the throws clause now what we can do the return type of create new file is boolean so we'll can write down boolean boolean let's say z is equal to this much or we can give a logical name to the variable let's say file creation and then you can give a sys out and just call a file creation so if the result of file creation variable sorry is true that means the file is created in this particular path if the file is not created the return type will be false so let us run this class file the return is true if the return is true that means the file is created in this particular path with the name that we have defined for the file
name of the file is example.txt so we can check it out in our desktop yes the file is created you can see that example.txt now if you open the file it is an empty file right now so we'll close it go back to the script next thing that we'll do is to write on this file write on the text file how do we write down we have to use the file writer class to start writing on the file the file writer class will be used to write on the file on and the file is present in this particular path and this path is referenced with the reference variable f so what we need to do is that we have to use the file writer class and create an object of the file writer class right now we will reference the particular object with fw equal to new file writer this is how we create the object after that we import this particular object by hovering the mouse over the red underline it belongs to the io package then we have to pass on the argument the argument will be nothing but where the file needs to be created or rather where the file needs to be where do you need to write so we need to write on this particular path defined by f out here okay so we will pass on f okay so we pass on uh, f f is the reference variable of the file object which defines the path so the file writer object will reference this path well we have to write on the file after creating this object of the file writer to write on the file defined by the path we need to create a buffered memory to write on that particular file defined on that particular path so we have to use the buffered writer class and create an object of it buffered writer let's say we'll have the reference as bw is equal to new buffered writer we import this particular class it belongs to the io package and where do you need to create the buffered memory the buffered memory need to be created on the file writer object and this file writer object is referencing the reference variable f which is nothing but the path where you need to create the buffered memory so i will pass on fw out here after that we can start writing so for writing we need to use the write method and the write method is part of the buffered writer class so we will use bw dot write now let's say i want to write down this particular line let's say we write down this is the first line the argument of the write method is a string so we have to write down whatever we need to write down we need to define it within the string format and let's say we need to write down this particular line also dot write and we need to write down let's say this is the second line now if you see out here we have written it down with the write method so let's see it is writing or not in the this particular file so we'll save the class file and run it the file is already created that is why it is showing you false so for example the file is already existing so if we again run this particular create file create new file method a method of the file class it will show you false if the file is already existing if this file is not existing then the return type will be true so right now it is showing you false because the file is already existing with the same name but let's see it has written down this these two lines are not so let's go back to this particular file and open it and we see that nothing is written down nothing is written down because we have not flushed out the buffered memory that we have created the buffered memory is created by using the buffer writer class so you have to use the flush method in order to flush out the buffered memory and then we will see the writing on that example.txt 
file. So use the flush method right now. So moment we use the flush method and again run this class file, this false is coming for this create new file. The file it is already existing. That is this file is already existing. That is why it is showing you false. Okay. Now let us go and check out the example dot text. We see that now the lines are getting printed out or lines are present inside the example dot text file. But if you see out here, these lines are present. These two strings are present in the same line. Now, how do we basically put this particular string, which string, this is the second line in a new line. How do we do that? For that, what we need to do is that we'll close this. We'll go back out here. In between these two lines, we'll use a method of the buffered writer class. The method is called as the new line method. So if we use the new line method, what will happen? This will be actually written down on, a, on the first line. After that, the cursor will move to a fresh line and on the movement of the cursor to the fresh line, this line will be printed out. And the cursor will move to the fresh line because of new line method being used. So what is going to happen? This will be printed out in a in the first line. After that, I'm executing this particular method called the new line method. So what will happen? After printing out, the buffer will move to the fresh line. After moving to the fresh line, it will write this particular line on the fresh line. So let us run this now and check it out. See, it has moved to the fresh line and printed out this particular string. That is, this is the second line on a fresh line. Similarly, I can keep on, you know, writing on, keep on writing like this, bw dot write. And I can write down something like this is the third line. Now, where I am writing it down after the flush method is used. So obviously, if the flush method is used, the buffered memory gets lost, buffered writer uh, memory gets lost or gets flushed out. So this will not print out this line. You can check it out. Just run this and check the example.txt file. So this is the third line is not been written down. So what we need to do is that we need to move this line, control X above the flush method. Now what is going to happen now? This will be printed out and in the same line, this will be printed out. Why? Because I have not used the new line method. Let's run this and check it out. So both these strings, this is the second line and this is the third line is printed in the same line. Let's say I want to print out in a new line. The only thing that I need to do is that I need to use the new line method between these two strings. So bw dot new line. Done. Save the class file and run it. You will see that it is printing on the third line. Okay, so this is how we actually write. If we want to read, let's say we want to read. So what we need to do? So let's write down read from the text file. Now for this, we have to use the file read class. File reader class create an object of it and the reference variable will be fr new file reader and this has to be imported from the io package now after that from which path the file reader file reading will be done the path is defined in the file object reference by f so we will pass f out here for reading also, we need to create a buffered memory. So the buffered memory used for reading is called buffered reader class. So buffered reader class will actually initiate the process, process, process of creating a buffered memory for reading purpose. So we'll use 
buffered reader class reference by br is equal to new buffered reader import this class this is a text file and where i am supposed to create the buffered mem reader memory it is supposed to be created on the file reader object so i will pass on file reader object and in turn the file reader object is referencing to the reference variable f which defines the path from which the file has to be read from and how do we read the reading method that is to be used is the method of your buffer reader class so br dot read read line okay and this has to be let's say i want to basically read and print out it in the console of eclipse so i have to put it within the ciso statement so i'll copy this into the other cut it out and paste it inside the printer then so this will read the reading will be done line by line so this will only read the first line this will read the first line so let us run this and the writing has already been run so what i will do i can comment this part right now and i'll save the class file and run it so it is reading the first line only if i want to read the second line what is the second line that has been written to the second line is this is the second line so i want to read it again i have to use sys out and we have to again use the read line method i'll copy this and paste it out here this will read the second line if i run the class file this will read the third line similarly if i want to run the read the third line this is the third line so again i have to use the same read line method like this and save the class file and run it it's the third line now let's say you have thousands of lines so you have to use thousand times this this particular sys out statement and that is kind of illogical and tedious so what we need to do is that we will use the while method out here to read all the lines at one go so to read all lines at one go so we'll have to use the while while loop and put this sys out inside the while loop and the condition has to be defined what is the condition that i have to de have to define a string let's say str which is equal to an empty string okay now i'll say that while br dot read line read line dot is not uh, is not equal to empty not equal to str so i'll say this is this part not equals to being empty because this is empty okay this is the empty string and empty string is defined by just a single pair of quotes double quotes so i will have to say that this is not equal to empty so i will put a exclamation mark put this whole thing within a another parenthesis and we'll say that this is not equal to empty the equal sign and if i put a exclamation mark it says that br dot read line is not equal to empty so what is trying to say the condition is that until unless the 
lines present in that particular example dot text is not equal to empty keep on printing the moment a particular line is empty then terminate the while loop so let us run this and print out so it is printing the second line and then it is not printing all the other lines it is showing null that means there is a problem out here so we will check out the problem first what is the problem so uh, let us change the condition out here so what we need to do is that the condition has to be changed and we will say that str is equal to uh, b r dot read line and this whole thing is not equal to null that means this string will hold each line read from each line and if it is not equal to none null that means it has some data uh, so if it has some data keep on printing the str so let us run this right now so it is actually printing all the lines so if tomorrow i add up one more line for example i add up one more line so I'll use this particular these two codes and add up one more line to it. Let's say this is the fourth line. Okay, and save this and run this while loop. It will actually read all the four lines. So let us save the file and run it. So it has read all the four lines. And plus, if we go back and check out example.txt, it is actually having the fourth line also in a fresh line out here so this is how we read create read and write from a text file now let's go back to our presentation so that's about it if you have any questions please revert to us thank you for watching the video thanks for